Hello and welcome to another video from CaliforniaPinball.com. In today's video we are going to take a look at Bally early solid state score displays. In particular we will explore where the voltage that powers the score displays comes from and how to tell if your score displays are dying an early death. So let's get started. The schematic diagram for a Bally early solid state pinball machine shows the score displays are powered by both 190 volts DC and 5 volts DC. The 190 volts comes from the high voltage section of the solenoid driver board. In the very early models, Bally used an AS2518-16 solenoid driver board. They added a fuse to the high voltage section after a few machines were produced and renamed the board as AS2518-22. On our test fixture today, we will be using the AS2518-22. The high voltage section that produces 190 volts to run the score displays is found in the upper left hand corner of the solenoid driver board. The components are under a plastic protector because the 190 volts can cause quite a shock. If your solenoid driver board is missing the plastic cover, be very careful in this area when the game is on. As you can see from the schematic diagram, Test point 2 of the solenoid driver board connects directly to a small 3 amp fuse on the board and then connects to the score displays via connector J3 pin 8. You want to measure the DC voltage at test point 2 to see what voltage your solenoid driver board is producing. To do this we've taken a digital voltmeter, placed it on voltage DC, connected the black lead to the ground point on the solenoid driver board, and connected the red lead to TP2, test point 2. The voltage is actually adjustable via a small blue potentiometer on the board. Using a small flat blade screwdriver you can adjust the voltage from around 160 volts to more than 190 volts. While Bally originally intended for the score displays to be powered by 190 volts, it is now best to dial down the potentiometer to around 170 volts in order to prolong the life of the score displays. They will run just fine with 170 to 175 volts. Keeping test point 2 at 190 volts will slightly lower the life expectancy of displays. New glass for these displays are getting expensive and hard to find, so you want to do everything you can to prolong the life. Here we're showing approximately 170 to 171 volts going from test point 2 to our score displays. Now let's talk about the most important part of this video. Test point 4 on the solenoid driver board comes directly from a bridge rectifier on the power supply board. The schematic diagram shows that test point 4 should be around 230 volts DC plus or minus 27 volts. That means that your test point 4 could be as low as 203 volts and as high as 257 volts. If your high voltage section on your solenoid driver board fails, which happens frequently, it is likely that the voltages at test point 2 and test point 4 will be the same. This essentially means that you will be sending 230 volts, or actually up to 257 volts, directly to your score displays. This will damage your score displays very quickly and cause them to fail. Here is a picture of what a score display will look like when the high voltage section fails. At the very early stage of failure, the score displays will start to exhibit burning circles. It can get so bad that every digit will have three or four of these circles and eventually destroy the entire display. The easiest way to prevent damage to your score displays is to measure the voltage at test point 2 and test point 4 on your solenoid driver board. Test point 2 is adjustable via the small potentiometer and should be set at between 170 and 175 volts. Test point 4 will be around 230 volts. If the voltage at test points 2 and 4 are all the same, the high voltage section on your solenoid driver board has failed and you should stop playing your machine until the problem is fixed. There are basically four options in order to fix this problem. First, you could buy a high voltage section repair kit on eBay or from some other pinball repair website. Repair kits are usually around $25, but it requires you to desolder and resolder about 12 to 15 parts. You will want to avoid this option if you are not comfortable with soldering. Second option is to send out your solenoid driver board to a competent pinball board repair facility. 
This will likely run around $100 with the shipping costs. A third option is to buy a new aftermarket solenoid driver board. Several companies are now producing these boards and they generally run around $150. Finally, your fourth option, if your score displays have been ruined, you should probably opt for new LED score displays. LED score displays do not use the high voltage section of the solenoid driver board. They operate on only 5 volts so it is not necessary to repair or replace your solenoid driver board. This is the most expensive option however because 5 new LED score displays run around $200. I hope you have found this video to be helpful. Remember the voltages at test point 2 and test point 4 should never be the same. If they are, this is a clear indication that your high voltage section on your solenoid driver board has failed. If you have enjoyed this video or found it informational, please like and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.